That was your jacket, Silvek. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? <laughs> come on, come on. So this is basically our head office. This is where the magic happens. So this is where is our recording studio, the shop and the training center. So let's have a look. All the boys are on their lunch break. I got the guy's TV, but I said under one condition. The only thing I want to see on it is self-improvement and self-help videos. And that's what the lads have there. So we basically supply our contractors and we train contractors how to do what we do, how to become a waterproofing contractor who can scale the business into having multiple teams, because that's what we do. We have six vans on the road right now, which is quite good because it's now there's much more headache with doing construction and other you know types of um, services, you know, compared to this, because here we're focusing on one type of a job with one product and you know, you can make a couple of mistakes, but after making them, it's pretty much easy money really compared to other stuff you know and this is where the magic happens this is where i do most of my trainings so every saturday or every second saturday we would invite people here contractors and we basically show them what we're all about we do it step by step we're actually moving to the uk now and other parts of ireland so basically our business is called dublin protective coatings but if somebody wants to jump on board with us they register their own name and they can trade on their let's say galway protective coatings and we give them all the marketing stuff we give them everything we direct them we spec the jobs blah 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 and we send them over the jobs and then we want a couple of percent of the turnover after the end of the year that's it that's the way we do it and we're actually expanding all over Europe now doing this so this is what I'm doing that's why I'm so busy so then you know you can look at all this and then you can understand why it's not making much sense to be going to Navan and making videos about rusty land cruisers when I have all of this on my plate you know <laughs> I'll show you the other part this is where the offices are. Here we have some guys doing the video editing. Here we have Matt, here we have Henry, the main man. Vito is on holiday and there we have Robbie. And here we have some jackets that Robbie did for us. We're actually, uh, so Robbie is responsible for doing all the hoodies and all the jackets. So we're actually not just doing them for ourselves. We're doing them for contractors as well. Where's the stuff that you're doing for the landscaping company? It's packed outside. It's packed outside. Anyway, this is the ones that we did for ourselves. Now, I didn't want them like that. I wanted to have them all different colors, like Power Rangers, right? So I was thinking, you know, the good employees would have the darker colors and the lazy p***s would have the pink and yellow, you know? But the human resources said that this would be, you know, I could get sued for that, you know, for discrimination. So everybody has the same boring yellow jacket. So there we have some landscaping company ordered some high-vis jackets and jackets. m, &M Landscaping. There you go. That's Henry's office. He doesn't like sitting here. He always goes to me because uh, he loves me. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. This is where the magic happens. This is where we make a lot of our plans. That's what we do. This is where we party. This is where we make plans. This is where we make podcasts. This is where all the magic happens. This studio here. <laughs> So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to focus on preparing the contracts for all the subcontractors and then we have to work on our asbestos stuff. We have a system where we waterproof existing asbestos roofs, right? But the competition has been basically rotten on me to the health and safety, doing me a huge favor. Because whenever they rattle me onto the health and safety, the health and safety comes to me and basically tells me how to do things, <laughs> which is quite handy. Before that, I would have to go make phone calls, pay people for, you know, like uh, coaching sessions, basically, you know. But now the health and safety comes to me and tells me exactly how to do things so we have written black on white what we need for that service in order to be done by the book do you remember yesterday i said that we have to do some homework on the machine that's gonna clean the roofs now i found one i'm gonna show you the machine and there's also a lesson in it because look at it this bloody machine basically you send it down the roof so you can clean the asbestos roof without touching it right but there's a business lesson in it right guess how much is the bloody thing it's nine grand right and there's a four months of waiting list you can't just go over and purchase one of these so you can't contact Germany and they have to make one for you but if you look at it there's absolutely no rocket science to it why is it costing nine grand you could literally design something like that and make it yourself look at that look at that nine G's for that you know 
So what I'm saying here is that your mind should be basically a business generating uh, machine. So when you look at something like that and you say it's nine grand, you should add together how much does it cost to build and could you do it yourself, <laughs> you know? Anyway, we have a Tuesday morning, all the lads are outside. We're gonna take some pictures because we got them the new Power Rangers jackets. And then I'm gonna head to Wexford. I think Wexford, yeah, we did a major asbestos job and it's leaking in a couple of places. The lads have been there a few times. They didn't solve it, so it's time for Looky Bookie to do some work. So I'm gonna shoot over on my own in the van, to see what's going on, and then back into Dublin. Poof. So we're with all the boys outside. And uh, we're gonna take a picture of everybody in the jackets. But I don't want the boring jacket of everybody just standing there. I want us to be like Power Rangers. So we're gonna do a couple of uh, takes on this. <laughs> so everybody, generally speaking, is happy with the jackets. But we have one princess who is not happy. So, show us your jacket, show us your jacket. No. He's not happy. He's not a happy camper. Show us your jacket, Silvek. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Show us. Come on, come on, give us a look. For Sake. <laughs> no, 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 no. All the vans are arriving. I think we have uh, six vans at the moment and one is getting fixed as we speak. So we're waiting for some of the lads and we're gonna take the picture and then I bounce. Okay, I want everybody to stand in the middle between those vans, right? And then we're gonna take a Power Ranger picture. <laughs> okay, so boys, I don't want this boring picture. So that half of the people, hands that way, this hand, this side, that way. What are you taking the picture with the phone? Oh, okay. No, there's a camera, okay. <laughs> right, I want to be in the picture as well. <laughs> okay, Henry, you and me over here. And then lads, you know what you're doing. We go left, yeah? Yes. Okay, take a couple of shots. Yeah, let's try like this. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of times, guys. Let's go of power <laughs> Rangers. <laughs> okay, one more. Uh, one more. <laughs> Maybe normal one. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Happy? Ah, sorry, sorry. Go, go, Power, power Rangers. Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Oh, look at how we feeling. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling yeah. even better. Oh, why don't you come with me to Exford? 100 percent yeah. Could you? Yep. Henry, can he come with me to Exford? Yeah. Okay, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Have a driver. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's bounce. Before I head down to Wexford, I have to go to get my driving license because I'm planning to get a motorbike for the summer and I lost my driving license. And I'm also on my second driving license, I only have two points. So one more speeding ticket and I'm banned off the road. So I don't want to give them any uh, excuses when they stop me. So I'm going to go and get my new driving license right now. People usually ask me, why do I drive an old piece of shit of a G-Wagon? And I say to them, oh, I'm on my second driving license. I cannot be getting speeding tickets. So driving a 40 year old G-Wagon that doesn't do much more than 120 an hour actually suits me to the ground. <laughs> And that's the fact. I could be a little bit more uh, fuel efficient, but screw it. So for the spin to Wexford, I asked Sean to come with me. Sean is one of our sales reps, right? On the way to Wexford, I'm gonna share a couple of stories. We're gonna find out what the hell is going on there, and then we're gonna be back in Dublin. I'm gonna give you my recipe for being fearless, right? Usually people are afraid of things, but there's absolutely nothing to be feared, right? I believe that there are only two things that any human being should fear, and that's going into jail or getting shot in the head. But there's even ways to bypass those two, right? So if you're afraid that you're gonna do something and somebody's gonna shoot you in the head, which is the worst scenario possible, all you have to do is read a couple of books about reincarnation, which I am a big believer of, and I will talk about it in the future episodes, a lot. The second worst things that can happen, the second worst thing that can happen, is getting locked in the jail, right? But I found an interesting theory here, right? So let's say I knew that in a year's time, I'm gonna be locked up in the jail because I did something dodgy, which I'm not. I'm not a bad guy at all. I mean, uh, what kind of a bad guy drives a 40 year old G-Wagon and has a cat? I have a cat! <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, regardless, I think the way to bypass jail time or make it more enjoyable is to claim that you are a lesbian woman before you go to the jail. Because if you claim that you're a woman, you know, you still got to sleep with a man, right? But if you claim that you're a lesbian woman, you get to sleep with all the women, right? Hold on, somebody's calling me there. But if you claim to be a lesbian woman, you still get to sleep with all the women because you're a lesbian, right? Huh. 
you know, and if you think about it deeply, let's say you went to the doctor and you asked for a piece of paper and you proved somehow that you have a phobia, a fear of fat women. Ha. Then the jail would have nothing other than to put you in a jail with five fit women. So imagine you get a five year sentence and they have to put you in a female jail because you're a lesbian woman and then you have a fear of fat women so they have to put you in a jail with five fit women. Ha. All of a sudden, five years jail time turns into five years of a holiday resort paid by the government. Ah, this is clever. Right, so we're on the way to Waterford. I was convinced we're going to Wexford, but it's actually in Waterford. I always confuse those two cities. Anyway, what I want to talk about right now is some of the law of attraction stuff, because I've, I was hinting some of my guests on the Success Podcast to talk about it. Nobody really wants to talk about it. Everybody thinks it's a woofy, poofy topic and everybody wants to keep it to themselves. I believe I have it figured out to a T. And um, I'm going to be basing my knowledge on three authors that I read the books of. And so there's three, three very special authors and all of them written multiple books on the topic of Law of Attraction, and all the metaphysics stuff. So one of them would be Dolores Cannon. She always talks about reincarnation and stuff like that. She says how to use the law of attraction. She reckons we can manifest anything in this life. So she's the first one. The second author would be Stuart Wilde. He's actually dead. He died in Ireland a few years back. Uh, he written, I don't know how many books. Uh, I read, I think, eight of his books about that topic. So there's Stuart White, Dolores Cannon. Dolores has about 15 books. And then you have Deepak Chopra. I think he written about 50 books on that topic. Now there's also more authors, but these, these are the three if you really want to have a grasp on the law of attraction and knowing how it works. So basically the principle behind it is that you can attract things into your life by thinking about them in certain way, right? Now people think it's a because when they try it, they do it for a week and they say, oh, well, it doesn't work. But there's a very specific way of doing it, right? So first of all, you have to start meditating because when you meditate, you basically bring your vibration on a different level. So when you vibrate to all of those goals, it basically attracts them into your life. Look, I'm gonna talk about it in many, many episodes. So I'm gonna start with the absolute basics just to have some sort of understanding. I can't just drop this big atomic bomb on you right here, right now, because it's not gonna make a lot of sense. Basically meditation, when you're solving problems and you're living a stressful life, meditation is very important. So you can picture your mind as a bucket full of water and it has a lot of dirt in it because your mind is like a vacuum. It absorbs all this that you hear and see every day. So it's like a butter of water and it's cloudy, right? So if you wanted to see through that bucket of water, let's say the bucket was clear, you would have to put it somewhere for an hour and let all of the dirt settle. And then you would have a clear vision through the water. So I believe this is the same principle applies to your mind. Look, we go through the day and we see all the in TV, all the in the radio, all the nonsense that friends talk to us about. And none of it is really relevant to your success. And you know, if you think about it, 95% of the information that you absorb every day, it's useless. You don't need it, you know? I start doing some meditation every day. And um, they reckon you should do it for about 25 minutes a day, minimum. You do, do it every couple of days, it's, it's good enough as well, you know? So once you start doing that for a couple of weeks, then you can start writing your goals. So basically what happens when you write down your goals, now obviously what I'm talking about here, it's not something I came up myself in my back shed. It's not something I heard from Mr. Tony in the bloody poop on a Sunday afternoon. This is not a knowledge that comes from me or any of my friends. This is knowledge that I got from books over the past 10 years. And I'm gonna try to pass it on in a couple of episodes. Whenever you write down your goals, apparently something happens. So when you, when you have your goals in your head and they're not written, they're not in a tangible form, they're just more like wishes. But if you write them down, something happens. I don't know what the hell happens, but everything that I write down and I do it the way I'm gonna tell you in this episode, it basically works, okay? So the, your mind doesn't understand language. So when you tell yourself that you want this, you want that, it basically means nothing because your mind thinks in pictures. It understands emotions, but it doesn't understand language. So whenever you write in your goals, you have to speak to your subconscious mind. So you have your normal conscious mind. Your conscious mind makes decisions. Well, I wanna go here, I wanna go there. I wanna have this for breakfast and I wanna have that for breakfast. But then you have your subconscious mind, okay? And then you have your super conscious mind. 
So you want to work between your subconscious and your super, super conscious mind. So basically, this is what I'm, what I'm going to tell you. Those commands, writing your goals, it's basically like loading CD onto a computer and downloading a new program. You basically have to download a new program into your brain and operate on that program. Because right now you're operating on whatever your parents told you when you were growing up and whatever the school told you when you were growing up. Usually people finish education when they finish school and that's a big error. In the terms of the subconscious mind, look, I'm gonna tell you a couple of stories here. So let's say, let's say for example, Nikola Tesla, he was able to develop all of these machines and when people used to ask him, where does he get his ideas? He said that he connects to the subconscious mind and the ideas basically pour to his head. And I'm gonna give you another great example, Beethoven, the great symphony, right? That man was, I think, how old was he? I'd say he, he was, I can't remember exactly how old he was. I'm not gonna you here. But anyway, Beethoven was deaf when he wrote his best symphonies. So when people asked him, how did he write all his symphonies when he was deaf? Because he wrote them note perfect. From the start to finish, he would just wake up in the middle of the night and the pour would basically pour through his brain. That's because he was using his super conscious mind. So basically, if you write these commands and you visualize them and you attach your emotions to that goal in a very specific way, that's what happens. You basically give commands to your subconscious mind and that does its work. So basically, writing down your goals, putting them away and not thinking about them after that. You can, you can basically compare it to making a cake. You pulled all the recipe into the bowl, blah, 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 and you throw it in the oven and that's it. Your work is done. You do the oven to the rest of the work. That's basically the principle about the law of attraction. Look, I'm gonna talk about it for a long more in the coming episodes. This is just to give you a general idea. So when you write down your goals, they have to be written in the present tense. So you'll be saying, I am blah, blah, blah. I earn blah, blah, blah. I am great at blah, blah, blah. I am magnet for attracting money. I am this, I am that. So you have to write them in a the present tense. And then what happens is you close it down and you visualize whatever you have just written down. Because remember, super conscious mind and subconscious mind doesn't understand your language. It doesn't give a doesn't care what you've written down in your English or whatever language you might speak. You have to visualize it and you have to attach some emotions to it. So let's say you write down, I bought my parents a new house. So you, after doing all that, you read what you just wrote and you put everything into vivid pictures. And the more details you write down, the better, right? And then you have to attach emotions to it. So let's say you wrote down, I bought my parents a new home in the next two years, right? or I restored my parents' bathroom if that's too big for you, right? So then what you do is you have to picture and visualize how you're walking your parents into the house, how happy she is, all of those emotions, because that's what really activates the law of attraction. It's not the words, it's the... It's the, it's the words, it, sorry. It's not the words, it's the emotions and the pictures. And you can read many books on that topic and I'm, I'm repeating. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people in the business world will tell you that this doesn't work, it's just a woofy foofy stuff. I believe it works, it works for me, anything right down without a fail always becomes true for me. That's why I'm going to emphasize on it a lot and I'm going to teach other people how to use it as well. Because I, I just, I'm a walking example that it works. I'm attracting people into my life. Whenever I need to hire a good manager, I write it down. I visualize exactly what he should look like. I visualize all the qualities he should have. Whenever I'm looking for a next girlfriend, I would write down exactly what I need. Now, previously I was just attracting all the... <laughs> But anyway, I would sit down and I would write down exactly what I need and the more details you put into it The more chances you have of attracting it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're enjoying this and you think that there is value in it Please subscribe like the video and send it to your friend who might benefit from the stories in this also another message We have absolutely no sponsors. The only sponsors we have is ourselves So if you like what you see and you would like to support us Maybe you could recommend one of my businesses or maybe you could come to my business to buy something or you could come to my tattoo studio. The list of my business is just down below. Thank you very much.